Hello, this is Bob, <clears throat> February 10th, 2013. I wanted to show you a little, some <clears throat> capacitors I made out of pill bottles. They're very, built <clears throat> very similar, very, they're almost identical to the, the larger ones. As you can see, I got the inside lined with aluminum foil and then I took my scrap piece of aluminum it's about 14 gauge somewhere in there it's roof flashing is what it is or was and connected it to the side of the aluminum inner plate and I just brought it up so I have this tab and then the outside is the outer plate that I covered with electrical tape. And I took, again, the heavier gauge aluminum, and I built this little bracket so I can ground it, clip it to a ground. I'm grounding the outside, and that's how I'm going to use it. Now, to make contact with the top terminal, it's just a bolt arrangement. As you can see, I just have a washer and a bolt and a hole drilled through the center of the cap, and that's it. These are small enough. I didn't have to make it any more elaborate. And as you can see, that this is just a little proud, see? And it bends, easily bends, but it makes good contact with the center terminal, which is what you want. Then you just thread it on, and you've got it. I made two of these, and uh, they work quite well. And they're a nice rainy day job that uh, you can put together. They're, they're basically very simple. You can call them a Leiden jar if you want. I call them capacitors, and that's the term I will be using. Now, what I have here is I've got it wired up. I've got my little electroscope, my little pill bottle electroscope, and I have it wired over to the top terminal of the capacitor. And over here, I have, a, it's just a clip. These are just little, uh, they're not connected to a wire, they're just clips. So I clip the ground terminal, wire to the terminal, and then, as you can see, I've got this little wire, and I've bent it, in a, bent it to a circle, and I've got it about 3 sixteenths of an inch from the metal edge of the top terminal. And what I'm going to do is, what I'm going to show here is, I'm going to charge it up with the electrofluorus. And you can see how you can, you can see with the electrofluorus that I that it is very it'll charge this thing up now here's the electrofluorus and what we have here you've got your top removable plate which is all it is it's six inch in diameter it's pretty large and you this is this is a nylon block that is a little dirty right now but because it picks up aluminum oxide as you rub it over time and then over here is the grounding terminal which you'll see that you need to do this to uh, is the part of the process. And then on the very bottom, this is just a base that it all sits on. But you, you can just see the aluminum edge. There's another plate in the bottom, and that's grounded. And that this is all grounded. And you can see I have a wire over here that goes to uh, earth ground. You do, which helps the earth ground helps maintain the the dielectric stress in the nylon block. And we're running a real low humidity. It's about about 37 percent, which is really dry in the house here. And of course, this is winter time, but we're having a real mild day for us, about 50 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now remember that electrofluorus gives you a a positive charge. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to charge this thing up. And then we'll discharge it. And I believe you can see all this. 
and it'll take a while. Okay. The leaf will drop back, right. and this will take a number of times. See when you're. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm sliding. I'm sliding the top plate across the nylon pad, and I'm touching the ground terminal. You have to do that. That's part of the process because what that does, it takes out, it actually allows it to hold a greater charge because it drains out uh, ex, any excess negative, and we want it to stay positive. So it, it makes a stronger positive. It'll hold a stronger positive, or whatever charge it is. This, in this case, it is positive. But as you can see, as I keep repeating the process, that the leaf is repelled from the stationary leaf a little bit every time, and this process goes on. And you're also filling, the, you're also charging or filling the capacitor. And in time, now the leaf just cannot move any further. In fact, it's up against the side of the uh, of the electroscope jar and uh, it's still taking a charge there did you see that I hope the camera picked that up I don't know but you see now it discharged almost all com completely now you can see the leaf moving again and it's just a neat little thing you can this thing go on forever and ever now I'm running about a 3 16 gap between the uh, top of the, the terminal on the uh, capacitor and the little grounding discharge wire <coughs> loop that I have next to it and uh, so it's about 3 16 and it depends how close you are you know the smaller the gap the quicker it'll uh, the sooner it will discharge because but the wider the gap and it'll just keep building as long as you feel like doing this this, this goes on and I just thought I'd show you that if, if you had an electrofluorus, if you want to make one, they're real simple. They don't have to be this, quite this elaborate. But the important thing is with, if you want it to work well is to have a nice thick nylon block. And uh, six inches in diameter is a good size. Uh, smaller ones will work. There it goes again. You see? And I... And it's really not now. It's completely discharged. Well, I just wanted to show you that it's a lot of it's a fun thing to do, so you uh, can play with that. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye.